In this video, we'll talk about how we can create a Spring Boot application and also implement a REST controller. So uh, in this video, we have a to-do list API, which basically can perform CRUD operations, create, update, delete uh, using Spring Boot, which we'll be using to develop our REST API. And in this video, we'll talk about how we can implement a simple REST controller. So a controller is basically uh, Java class where uh, you can handle URLs and API endpoints, uh, which then passes on the logic to the service or to the model, it's the database. So controller is your starting point to uh, your URL and how we can actually work with a URL or an API endpoint. So let's get started. Uh, we'll be making a very simple get uh, request using a controller. And a get, a get request is basically when uh, a client asks something or gets some data from the server. So uh, if I want to get a task or get all of my tasks from a to-do list, I do a get request and then that fetches me a JSON or any other thing which then acts as a uh, data which we get from the REST API or the server. So let's get started. Uh, first, we need to create a class. So go inside Java, SRC main Java, and uh, here go to new class. And this is going to be inside something called as hello. So we'll be making a get request uh, called as hello, and we get back, uh, let's say, namaste from the so. So let's see how we can implement that. We'll call this hello controller. So uh, a very common naming convention in Spring Boot uh, being very opinionated is that you need to, uh, it's good practice to have uh, the controller name inside your class whenever you're implementing a controller. So, which tells the user that oh, this is a hello controller. Great, so we don't need a main method here. We just need hello controller. And all we can do is press finish. And here we have it. We have our controller now, again, this is not a Spring Boot REST controller yet. It is simple. It is just a Java file or Java class. So we have to annotate this to let Spring Boot know that this is a REST controller. So for that, we do an iterate REST controller and we hover on top of it and we import it now. So now basically, now our controller is a REST controller because we annotated the class with it. So. This is how when Spring Boot on starting up, it does a, cl a class path scan. It basically scans all your classes and sees all the annotation on top of it and then acts accordingly. So this is how you tell Spring Boot that, okay, this is a controller and everything inside will be having API endpoints. Great, so now let's start developing our first controller or implementing our first controller method. So. Uh, we'll be doing a request, a get request. So for that, we need uh, to have a way to map that request to a function or a method inside our controller. So again, Spring Boot provides you with something called as uh, REST uh, request mapping. So you use request mapping to actually map your your endpoint to the method. So let's do request mapping, and we go to slash hello. So we will have to uh, implement or uh, get this. So let's give it some time. And we have a public string say hello. Great. And uh, let's import request mapping. Awesome. And we return namaste. A very a very simple uh, controller which greets you when you ask or request something or ask for a hello, right? Nothing complicated, nothing complex, just a simple controller. So here, what happens behind the scenes is that whenever you access localhost port 8080 or uh, base URL slash hello, uh, that slash hello is mapped with this function, the say hello function, and it returns back namaste. So in this video, we'll talk only about how we can return a string, but in the upcoming videos, we'll actually return objects and much more complicated data structures than just a string. So here, we use the request mapping annotation uh, to have a slash hello mapped to the function. And uh, as you can see, uh, Spring Boot makes it really, really easy 
uh, and if I have to actually go all the way and say it makes Python as easy as Python to actually develop REST controllers. So it's as simple as this. You have a REST controller annotation and a request mapping annotation. You have a function, you have a return value and you're done. So you have a get request working completely fully without any other thing to do. And all we have left to do now is to run this and we can see uh, that when you do a slash hello, it returns back namaste. So let's try that. Uh, we do go here and we run it. So give it time. It's really nice ASCII art here. So I really like that. Okay, so application failed to start. Why is that? Very fair. And it is stop process. Oh, okay, okay. I already might have something running. So, yeah. so let's stop everything. My bad. And okay, now that we have stopped everything, we start it again. We really shouldn't have got lost on that. Okay, so now I can see that Tomcat has been started on port 8080. So we had our previous uh, running previous server running. So now when you go to localhost port 8080, not 8080. Yeah. So again, we get this page, but when you go to a slash hello, we get a namaste back. So this is how you implement a REST controller uh, using Spring Boot. And uh, this is a very, very, very simple tutorial, a very straightforward tutorial. And from the next uh, video onwards, we'll actually start building our to-do list API. We'll actually get into the architecture and how Spring Boot works, how we can actually uh, adhere to the Java way of actually building REST applications with the service, the model, GPA, all of that fancy stuff. So yeah, uh, this is what I have for this tutorial. Uh, we have successfully implemented a REST controller, which uh, does nothing but just you know says you a simple cute hello and a namaste. So, uh, that was it. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.